So all the advances in genome sequencing or gene sequencing or DNA sequencing has resulted in we have many, many genome sequencing. So what is a genome? A genome is all the coding regions or DNA in, a, in an organism. And it started, the, the whole idea of genome sequencing started basically with a number of scientists setting up to say that we wanted to, to predict, we wanted to sequence the human genome. However, all before that, this was in early 90s, early 1990s, before that, there were a few genomes already sequenced, but they were basically viral genomes. So the you know, you know, projects that are out there, they made some realistic goals and they had, had some idea that you can maybe do it in 20 years. They actually took only slightly more than 10 years. So it was like, the technology advanced much faster than people th thought. So the first organism was sequenced was some small bacteria, and then they moved on to yeast and other small animals, and then finally the human genome sequenced in the early 2000s. So, what is revolutionary here, if you look at it as a plot, uh, how fast the sequencing methods are done. So that is like something, how fast things have happened, and, and you look at some look, look at the scales. And the only thing that actually have a similar speed of increase has been, uh, is the number of websites in the beginning of the World Wide Web. So in the also 90s, 20s, so, so, so. But the number of, the cost of base pair sequencing or the cost of, uh, speed of it has increased in the early 2000s much faster than anything else we've seen in uh, recent human evolution technology. So today there actually are 28,000 human sequences. There are more than 100,000 different sequencing projects and there are more than 264,000 organisms being sequenced. So we are there sequence a very, very large part of all the organisms that, that we know about. So you see, they have, there are more than 10,000 permanent drafts generated this year. And actually, thousands of complete genome sequences. This is called the data, gen genomes, of gold database of genomes. And genome size is various, anything from a few thousand base pairs up to hundreds of billions of base pairs. In general, you can say that the more complex genomes you have, the more complex is organism. But it's not a very direct relationship. But for instance, most viruses are smaller than most bacteria. However, there are some viral genomes that are very big. And most bacterial genomes, prokaryotic genomes, are smaller than all the fungi, or all the, all the eukaryotic genomes. But there are also some bacteria that are very big. And the single cellular organisms, like the proteins, or the fungi, are in general smaller than the multicellular organism. But uh, there are the proteins that are very big, and there are some, and in particular between the eukaryotes of high and the multicellular organisms, there's not a very strong relationship between what we think is complexity and the size of the genome. So, for, for instance, the, our genome is about 3 billion base pairs, and there are many plants that are. 10 or even 100 times bigger than our genome. Mainly that's because it contains a lot of repeated and duplicated events. But there are also insects that are small, are small in general, but they also don't are as big as our genomes. And uh, if you look at the number of proteins, coding the number of genes in the genome, it's also it's related to the, the number of uh, size of the genome, but it's not, absolutely not a one-to-one. -one. There are eukaryotes that have only 10,000, or I might have been even 5,000 genes, but have very, very big genomes. And, there are, and, there are, and the vice versa. So you see the green dots here on the right. But in general, the bigger genome, the more genes you have. And an interesting story here can be said about how many genes we have. And there were a lot of guesses before the human genome was finished, the first draft was published. And the poop many people, I guess, for a few hundred thousand. And there was an estimate from that um, Drosophila and C. elegans had about 10, 15,000 genes, and they were much less complex than we were, and than we are. 
so I thought we need to have many more genomes. So they asked, it was an estimate. It was also some estimates based on the number of different gene coding EST sequences that have been found. And you end up with a few hundred thousand. So not even a bet. I think the bet was about one euro. And the winner was actually the one who had guessed the lowest number, which was about 45,000, was the guess. But actually, the number of was 25,000, and since then it's been drawn down to so the order of 20,000 genes today in the human genome. And that is significantly less than people thought before the genome project. So this also shows something of the value of a genome compared to just having the genes, is that you actually know the complete story of it in Norway. You know everything. It's not, you don't know, you don't, you just think of some parts, you, know, you always know that you might have missed something, but the genome is the entire coding information from Norway. So, as I said here, this is, this is some uh, organism here, and we completed and things and so on. And of course, this, as I said, this first genome was some Epstein Barr virus, or some virus that had some few hundred thousand base pairs. And uh, well, if, if you first was some fakes, then we only had 5,000 base pairs and 10 genes, etc. And the Epstein Barr virus had 172,000 base pairs and have eight genes and so on. And then uh, there are some small bacteria with about a million base pairs and. Uh, less than 1,000 genes. So there has been some attempts on that is the smallest living organism should have in the order of 500, 600 genes and a million base pairs. It would be hard to have something smaller that is living on itself. But you see then that you have human has an order of 3 billion base pairs and 20,000 genes, but there are fishes and salamanders that have 10 times, 100 times more gene base pairs than we have. Uh, and if you look at the uh, prokaryotic genome, it has in the order, I mean, the typical one is E. coli, you see here to the right. It has most of the genes that are involved in metabolism and, and uh, yes, re reproduction, just trying to do things. Genes are often organized in uh, operons, so if you ever need to have tryptophan synthesized, you have five genes, tryptophan A, B, C, D, E, that are needed for making tryptophan, and they are controlled by one single organism. So this is like you can express all these ones, which is very useful because if you want, you need all five for making tryptophan if you need it. So you just need to control it once. And you see that about 5% uh, of, the, of the genome is involved in any metabolism, and um, there are also some transport and binding proteins that are quite frequent. You need to import and export things from the, from the environment. And the regulatory function is only 1%. On the other hand, if you move up to yeast, which is not so much bigger, it's about maybe 6,000 instead of 4,000 genes, but you have many more genes involved in uh, cellular transport and uh, transport roads, and also in uh, genes involved in protein phase, so fold the modification dis destination, so you have chaperones and so on, and uh, you also have more structured genomes because the cells are much bigger, so you need to have cellular structures that are much bigger. Uh, and the, but the number of genes are actually not so so different from E. coli, but they are focused on slightly different things. Then in the human genome, you see what is really, uh, you see that you have very, very large, 40% of the genome is nucleotidic binding. So a lot of things that are regulatory, that is binding to the DNA and explains what, how other genes are expressed and when they are expressed and not expressed and how they are regulated. Uh, you still have a lot of enzymes, but a lot of them are actually peptidases. They're, mo they're for modifying other proteins or degrading proteins, etc. You see the metabolic ones that are um, uh, involved in, uh, well, are much fewer. And you can see that, for instance, you have a lot of signal receptors, signal transduction receptors, you have receptors, you have transplant memory receptors. You even have 489. GPCRs, G protein linked receptors, that are one class of receptors that are all rather similar, but they're all there for finding regulatory events from the outside of the cell into the inside of the cell. So there are, the, and also there are many more genomes. In this case, it's about, well, about 200,000 genes, protein coding genes in the human genome. And there's a lot of repeat sequences. For instance, you have a lot of transposons, a lot of, a lot of sequences are repeated that are uh, uh, 
Come in there and have short repeats that are repeated many times. And there are so called transposable elements that are appearing and disappearing. And you see, well, a lot of the fruit is actually unclassified, so the fruit is not, not known, but there's a lot of different functions. A lot of receptors, a lot of uh, transcription factors. You see, the blue group to the left is transcription factors. And still, it's a lot of unknown. So this is part of what bioinformatics is about, is to figure out what all these genes do, figure out why is there such a difference between the different organisms, and how has it evolved, how do we consider that, and what, what, and what is every single individual gene doing, and not only what it's doing in general, but also what it's doing exactly in each cell and when.